In today's video, I wear blue gloves, use blue magic liquid, clean blue parts with alcohol, later glue blue parts, clean blue parts and primarily paint blue parts, because I already dislike blue. Hello fellow modelers, what a day, what a lovely day. This time I don't have a kit, so surprise for you. I printed all parts with my new resin 3D printer. The Warwick model has more than 200 parts, so prepare them to correct scale and print them took a few days. The original design and scale is 1 to 16, so it's probably prepared for RC model. I don't have such a huge amount of resin and primarily printing area. I like small models, so I change the properties of each part to 72 scale. This is slightly better. I use for preparing parts for printing Prusa Slicer. I found it very intuitive and has perfect options for creating printing supports. Essential is to check out if some parts are not printed in the air, otherwise you need to add more supports or change the orientation of objects. The magic machine is Prusa SL1, I bought it in the kit. So I am proud that I assembled it correctly. It was fun by the way. The resin printer is printing models from photosensitive resin. I have a blue one but you can buy different colors or with a different mechanical properties. Uploaded files that are layers to the machine and only press start icon. The whole process is fully automatic so that you can go sleep for 6 hours or more. I am printing with the best resolution which is 25 microns. You cannot see layers mostly. And that is the result, however, it is not all. You need to wash out excess resin with isopropyl alcohol and then cure parts with a UV lamp. I got this curing and washing machine from Prusa for testing and for free. And I am glad for it because it makes the whole process much easier. But if you do not have this machine, you can wash out excess resin with alcohol and airbrush and then cure parts with a UV lamp for nails. This is the result, you cannot see printing layers without magnifying glass, so not bad at all. I already told you that the model is designed for 1 to 16 scale, so in 72 has beautiful and soft details. I glue resin parts with a flexible super glue, but you can use ordinary super glue as well. The only problem is to remove printing supports carefully. If you use the wrong tools, you can presumably damage the parts because the resin is relatively fragile, as you can see. The original 1 to 16 scale model has tolerance between parts, but in scale down model not so much, therefore I must modify almost every part for correct fitting. Best is electric grinder, like Proxon or Dremel with a diamond milling cutters, or soft metal files. You can blow out accumulated dust with an airbrush, but for health safety wear protective equipment, at least face mask, COVID approved. I forgot to mention that I bought 3D models of Warwick from Gamebody.com, otherwise you can download some similar models for free as well, but the details are usually worse. The chassis is simplified version, you can choose from a complex with active gear or simple like this one, however this is not RC model and the details are awesome anyway.
I found out better for gluing small parts with black flexible super glue. It contains the rubber particles, so the bond is less fragile. I printed a few test figures, but it is my first complex model, and I was surprised that it looks quite good. Only fitting is a nightmare. In any case, it is much easier than build the whole model from scratch. The truck finally has some shapes. I cannot believe that it was a blue liquid at the first. The resin printing is almost like a Terminator recreation in the movie. You can get objects from a liquid. I had a problem with the printing wheels. I cut them to the halves in the editing program and print them without supports. The disadvantage is more cleaning, but the shape is precise and you reduce resin consumption. It is only essential to thin down resin to correct fitting. The model has details like a separate clutch or sheathed lever. The truck is almost finished, so we need to look at the tanker. Prusa Slicer has clever functions. You can make objects hollow and reduce the resin consumption significantly. Only the objects have errors, so the program failed a few times. However, the result is lovely. You do not need supports for this part, so they are nicely precise. I use for gluing large parts super glue as well, but this one is slow drying. Therefore, you have more time to glue parts precisely and correct orientation. I know, it looks like a very expensive project, because one liter of resin cost more than $70. But if you use hollow functions, the whole tanker uses only 150 ml of resin. So relatively, it is cheaper than plastic kit. If you don't count the price of a 3D printer, time for preparing and price of 3D models. However, you have unlimited possibilities and freedom for what you can do 
and its payoff. The Tanger also has a lot of parts that you need to modify, therefore I assembling the most of the parts before painting due to wrong fitting. I know, it looks so cool. I think you already hate blue as well, so it's time to unify the whole model with a primer. It will reveal imperfections, but primarily seal thin printing layers. The primer or rather surfacer is very aggressive chemical, so use good respirator or room ventilation. Also use old cheap airbrush because it is hard to wash out this chemical. I am filling the bone with a Surfacer 500, which is primer for airbrush but it has very dense consistency and you can use it as a filler. I need to restore tire pattern after filling and sanding. It looks easy, right? Only the wheel has around 1cm in diameter and the pattern lines are under half of a millimeter. So I am using thin 0.3mm drill bits, you can find them on eBay for a few dollars, because you will crack a few of them. The engine hood part has a quite pronounced printing layers. Maybe I set the wrong layer thickness, but it looks like a problem with a 3D model. I made hollows for the track parts, but they are from the bottom side and I can easily cover them with a thin plastic board. I decided not to make more modifications, because the model already has some nice details. But the floor on the top of the tanker is inconsistent and ugly around parts bones. Therefore, I am using steel photo edge mesh from Edart. And that is all, so let's paint the beast. You can use black primer or ordinary black acrylic color. The whole track is black, which is boring, but I will see what I can do with it.
Okay, some painting. I can start with highlights and shading. Basically, you can make model optically less uniform and spray lighter color on the top or exposed sections. I am using for base layer with excellent metallic paint, and it is lacquer base, so it is relatively resilient against weathering chemicals or other paint types. You can, for example, use these properties and spray over black enamel color, then use a little bit of enamel thinner and remove top black layer with a brush. This way you will reveal base silver color and make nice scratches. The black and grey is dull, so I am spraying over the whole surface blue filter. It is basically highly diluted blue paint. Now the shade is more interesting. I am making edges details more pronounced with a dry brush technique. Ok, more weathering, and this time dust. The sand color is again enamel based, and you can combine it with a brown for more interesting effect. And you already know this technique. I moisten brush to enamel thinner and carefully remove the top dust layer. This way you can create nice stains or accumulated dust only on places where you want. And the same on the tanker. If you want to remove the dust layer more efficiently next time and with a less enamel thinner, you can spray under a layer of a clear varnish.
I made a few print screens from Mad Max movie to make it at least a little bit similar. But in the end, it is better to make shading and weathering by yourself. It is a model, so you must make some parts a little bit more pronounced. Otherwise, you can paint the whole model only with a black color. The war rig in the movie was a black on the all parts, but I was about to make at least some parts with different colors, at least Volkswagen Beetle on the tanker. You can use color chipping technique with a water based varnish. Spraying dark grass shade first, then apply chipping varnish and in the end the top color layer. So if you apply water on the surface, you can easily remove the top color layer. I had a problem with the overall dusty look. I was not satisfied with the result, so I applied on the surface aggressive lacquer thinner. You can possibly destroy the whole work this way, but I'm enjoying and trying different approaches and chemicals, so why not? The final effect is less uniform, and the thinner also diluted layer of a clear varnish, so the surface is nicely weathered.
Last but not least is to add and paint final details. I use for this work primarily water-based acrylic colors like Stadel, Revel Aqua or Vallejo. Clear parts you can glue with ordinary PVA glue. It looks weird and white, but it becomes transparent after drying. And also, if you apply accidentally glue on the model surface, you can wipe it out with water. I am using chrome wallpaper for back mirrors. The paper is relatively thick for 72 scale, but it is the best mirror self adhesive foil what I know, so I like it. The last weathering step is splattering. I use these enamel colors because you can wipe out large dots with an enamel thinner. And that is all. It is my first complex resin model, so it was primarily for testing. But I am pleased with the result because I am a huge fan of a Mad Max. So I wanted to have some iconic model in my collection. I think I learned how to work with my 3D printer and prepare models, so I will probably make tutorial how to print and what to look at. I wish you a better and happy new year because this one was quite crazy. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Here is the finished model. <laughs>